Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Shaman's Cave. I'm Renee Barabo. And um, coming to you from, it's spring. Spring is in the air. And what a great time to talk about the earth, because we're going to go into a series now about all of the different elements and how you can work with them better in your life. And it's really going to be a lot of fun. And today we've decided to start with the earth um, and see where we go from there. I think we're going to go to the water, but then I was thinking, well, do we want to be sea urchins crawling out from the water <laughs> into the earth? <laughs> Is it backwards? Where do we start? Where, where do we start? Well, you know, we, we, our show that led up to these shows, because we did a show last week um, to kind of introduce you to the work that we're doing um, for the next couple of, next few shows, is we're so out of touch with nature. Um, yes, people go to the parks and they go hiking when they can and they go skiing when they can. But as far as nature being a sentient being and that we are nature and not separate from nature, that's a real missing piece to our health and being able to deal with the climatic changes that are happening today because throughout history, shamans have known how to speak to the earth and how to speak and sing to the elements to be able to cut down on um, how much destruction would happen during storms and storms are a natural part of life. And so last week, Renee and I talked about the difference between manipulating uh, energy with shamanic work of demanding and starting to domesticate the elements and telling them what to do. <laughs> and neither Renee or I like to be told what to do. And <laughs> if we tell each other what to do and the elements will do the same thing to us. You know, they just get louder. Where's the sacred reciprocity? Where's the respect? Where's the singing and gratitude for the life that we're being given? There's nothing right now um, except for the normal activities that we do on the earth. So what would happen if the elements became our friends? How would life change for us on a personal level and on a collective level? That's our question. Yes, just think about some of your friends and you know when they're in their grumpy mood, you just like allow them to have that, that space and time. When you were talking about that, that we're hiking and skiing and all of those things, um, the, the, the sad part I'm, as I'm doing a lot of research right now is that children are spending three times more, three times more time on their video games than they are spending in their backyards. And so I, I don't want to judge that whether that's right or wrong because I don't know. I don't know what what they're being trained for for this next part of the evolution. You know, there's been part of me that thinks like, well, maybe there's going to be a time and they're not even going to get to go outside. It's you know, I, I was writing that science fiction um, movie where I was thinking like, okay, you know, you get to go outside in your energetic bubble for a few minutes a day, and um, you know, hopefully, I'm not going to witness that in my lifetime, but we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, this morning I was doing some more research and kind of getting an order for this. And I was reading an article on Forbes magazine about, you know, my question to when I put the Google search in is how can two people looking at the same melting ice caps see something totally different? So does that go in the water part? Well, you know, or, or like how, like, you know, like when I was hiking up Salkantai or when, you know, 10 um, in 2004, which was what, about 20 years ago, you know, the, 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 we, we went up at 18,000 feet and we, you know, walked over the snow caps and we swam in the icy streams. And, you know, and I was thinking the other day, it's like, wow, well, what I'm reading is that if I went up there, it's probably dry land now. Mm -hmm. That body 
of uh, experience isn't even available to other people. So I'm grateful that I had it. And I'm just curious as to um, how my eyes are seeing this differently from a different perspective than somebody else who, who's not particularly thinking that we're experiencing this um, earth evolution the way that, you know, that maybe Sandra and I see it. Yeah, what you're saying, Renee, is a really interesting question because in everything that's happening on the planet right now, it doesn't matter where we go, children looking at devices more than being in nature or um, different behaviors uh, that are happening, is number one, we're looking through the eyes of ego. And the eyes of ego just doesn't have the information available. You know, we're, we, we live in a very short period of time and space. And um, we can't see around us and we can't see the bigger picture. And um, we don't understand the history, you know, because it wasn't, you know, we like to see the earth history as these little chunks that happened throughout the, the millions of years, but it, it's all one moving um, organism as we're evolving. I, I, I'm evolving in ways that I didn't expect right now and, and watching where I was from when I was a kid to where I am now physically in a body. It's all one process that we keep separating out, you know? And where, that, where we are in that process right now is beyond our wildest dreams because the process has been going on for millions of years. And so where are we in that process and what is right for the kids coming in and what is, is right? But from a shamanic point of view and, and how sh shamanic cultures survive um, the changes in the climate was they were so familiar with the elements that again um, they're beautiful I, I think I shared this once before there are beautiful songs um, of Navajo women singing before a flood um, asking the water to just divert just a little bit to save the houses in the way and it did and what if we could do that, but not through manipulation, but through love, mutual love and kindness. And knowing our place, you know, knowing that our place is here is like, you know, there's these little speck, you know, speck of not even, probably even smaller than a little speck if you think about it in the long term, but that, but that we have to find some kind of, um, Right now, everything is up up for debate. I mean, there's just like, there's no, it's like, I, how do, it's kind of like the same thing as how do we find common ground with the earth? You know, how that this earth is sustaining us. And uh, one of the things that I was talking to somebody about this week was about, you know, the that we'll have climate refugees. And I, I was even thinking to myself, it's crazy, that some of the politics now in the United States about securing up the borders is not so much, it's more long, long range forecasting that there's going to be a whole lot more people who are going to be needing to come live on this dry land in the middle of the, you know, the, the United States. And, you know, cause it's pretty big in the middle. And, and, it, and I was, when I took, turned around and put it into that perspective of, well, where, where would we be migrating to? Like where, what if I really had to be in relationship to the land, you know, where, how would I, how would I survive? How would I live? And, you know, not even from a doomsday kind of prophecy kind of thing, but more from like, what is my relationship to my home and my car, all of the, the things that I, you know, that I so hold so dear, like what you said from ego, instead of from, what is my relationship here really about? You know, what am I here to, to teach? What am I here to learn from this planet that tends to offer me great abundance? The other morning I ran outside and welcomed the new day. Like, you know, uh, but I don't do it every day. It was just like, 
I don't know why I a warm wind wafted in and I ran out and was very excited. So like, you know, what are those sustainable practices that I can do on a daily basis to be in more alignment with the earth out there? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's what it's about. And then it actually improves people's mood and it makes people feel connected because the earth becomes a living being. I know for me, what happened was, um, it was it was something close to 30 years ago. Um, the spirit of Santa Fe came to me in a journey and told me not to leave Santa Fe, that this was a safe place to be. And, and the point is, there is no safe place to be on the planet right now. Um, this was a journey that I had 30 years ago. I, I didn't ask for, I had no intention. It was a spontaneous message. But later, ISIS, people would keep asking me, where should I move to? I want to feel safe. Where should I move to? I want to feel safe. For over 10 years now, I've been getting requests from people to journey. Where should I move to? And ISIS's answer is always the same thing. Stay where you love. You know, <laughs> hey, that's your home. There is no safe place on the planet right now. And one time she said, um, I was in a workshop and, and there was a prediction. It was ages ago, ancient ages ago. There was a prediction that there was going to be an earthquake in Montana. And so the student, student came up to ISIS. I was channeling ISIS for the group and asked ISIS where she, she should move and would she be safe in Montana. And ISIS said, if you wanted to be safe, you never should have been born on this planet. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I had that similar experience because the spirits came to me when I was in Taos thinking I was having a spiritual experience. And it was this apparition that, one of the very first times that like this apparition came, I was half dreaming and half awake in the room with this, you know, the, the conch shell blowing the smoke west and, you know, everything was get out of here. And, you know, I didn't want to go to Palm Springs. It was just to my mind, a bunch of rich people, you know, with their golf courses. And, you know, I was driving up the street that I still, I still live near, you know, and the mountain just kind of grew in me one day. And it was like one of those spontaneous experiences. And so whenever I said, well, where can I go now? You know, I got the writing cabin up north by the water, but it wasn't like, you know, pack up and leave. It's like, well, if, you know, if you insist, you, <laughs> you need this, you can have that too, but you know, you're still here. And I know that a lot of people had been, had, had been really holding space along the fault lines here in the desert you know, to be in relationship with them, not to, you know, think that we had any power or control over whether or not a big earthquake would hit. I mean, because we just don't have that. We just don't have that. Right. Hopefully, if one hits, I'll be like up at the water cabin. But, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I just hope to think that we stay in enough right relationship that we're exactly where we're supposed to be at the time that we're supposed to be there. And I think that's as, as good as it gets with that. Um, you know, and the earth is, the earth has warmed up. You know, the earth, the, the thing that I've been curious most about is, you know, this idea of, you know, the, first we went through the nuclear age where we could blow ourselves up. And then now we're what they call the epoch of Anthropocene, where as, as a, um, that we have the ability to really uh, take, full advantage of the resources on this planet so that it becomes unsustainable. And, you know, so I, I don't think that it's mine to go out and grab more and more and more, you know, I, I, there's just so many different things about like, okay, should you be a vegan or a vegetarian or eat meat or, you know, I've always kind of had this hunter gathering mentality and hunter gatherers ate, ate along the way. And, you know, I understand that we're growing a lot of cattle for, for this kind of purpose and stuff like that. But I still think that for me personally, as a hunter gatherer, that I, if I have to go out in the yard and get my nuts or, you know, pick my, you know, tomatoes, that that's what, if I have, I have to have a relationship to the food. I'd like to know that it's grown locally. All of those things are, 
are better ways that I live more in relationship to, to my surroundings. And important about my, my earth surrounding are the people who are living around me. You know, to have that respect for my neighbors, to, to find out what we have in common. I mean, because we're living in this, we're living on the earth in a, a little pod here. We're not like isolated. And it's not like I live here and you don't. Right. Yeah, absolutely. No, you're making um, excellent, excellent points. And, um, you know, we could go on and on and on into we get our food from the earth and then how do we prepare it and how do we cook it and what's the energy we put into it. And it all goes back to relationship. What, what we're trying to talk about here is that when you build relationship, you, you end up in a state of sacred reciprocity. And when you end up in a state of res sacred reciprocity, giving and receiving happens in balance and flow happens naturally and harmony happens. And so, you know, there's so many places we could take this. You can journey to everything and look at how you can create a stronger relationship with it. So that um that you're more in flow together you know so hopefully just the journeys that we're going to be leading here um short journeys will inspire you to think about other levels that you can take this work to yes absolutely and so the journey that that i'm going to lead today is that i believe and you know that we're like water which is going to be our next topic i believe that we're like 80 what eight, if we're in health we're like what 80 percent water and one of the things that i saw once in a journey was that we are aligned to our magnetic we're aligned to the magnetic pole too be see a compass works by a, a lodestone floating in a bowl of water and there's it's always tends to point the uh, magnetics always point north and south so how um, the wind work is fashioned is that that we also have that capacity to always be aligned to our our magnetic north when we're aligned to the earth and to spirit and so today we're going to do a little part of that where we're going to actually align um, and and how i visualize it is that there's a spin axis that comes down through the heavens comes in through our spinal cord goes down into the earth. And so what we're gonna do is, and I don't think we've done this before. Have we sounded where I'm gonna, I'm gonna have us unspin no. so that we have an unspin. Okay, I usually save this for some of the other work, but we're only, we're not doing it all. We're just gonna, we're gonna do the unspin because what we, I want us to do is I want us to tap into that magnetic molten core at the center so that you remagnetize your spin axis so you know where you are when you're um, navigating on the earth plane and so that your feet become more planted on the earth and that you know you know where you're um, where you are and so that's what we're going to do how's that sound that sounds great i'm ready <laughs> <laughs> okay so i think i'll just use my whistle and kind of talk you through it so um i think What's today? I think we'll start by, uh, we're in the spring as we're talking about this stuff. So I think we'll face east. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna, um, we're gonna close our eyes and we're gonna go counterclockwise in this experience where I'll blow the wind whistle and we'll invite the east wind to unwind us. We're gonna go to the east, to the north, to the west, to the south. Sandra's already gone. <laughs> and we're gonna, and we're gonna, you're gonna, Remember when you used to be out in the yard as a kid and you'd spin around? So you're gonna start to spin faster and faster um, counterclockwise. No one needs to fall over. And then you, and when I say stop, what you're gonna do is you're gonna find, you're gonna find that place between where you're wobbling from the spinning and from where that molten lava center of the cord, we're gonna go down into the earth where it's connected so that you find the place between where you're spinning and where the earth magnetism lies so that you can connect. You like that? I like it. Okay. 
All right, so close our eyes and let's start with the calling into the east wind, Eurus, the east wind, to come here as we start to spin. And we're going to spin counterclockwise. And know you're safe, know you're protected, just keep spinning. And as you're spinning, imagine this, this pointed part of yourself, the spin axis going down, connecting into the middle of the earth, reaching towards that magnetic pole, that magnetic magnetism at the center. You might start to feel wobbly. Now anchor your own spin axis into the magnetic field so you can find that still place where you can always be balanced. Now get yourself really sturdy. See that you're anchored in there. And then we're gonna have the east wind wind us back up, but with a real steady spin axis that's anchored into the center of the earth. And once you've found that place, that balance, you can return there a lot and just re-anchor yourself really quickly in there so that no matter what, if there's tornadoes, anything going on around you, you can find that still centered place really quickly. Mm, I love that. I'm going to try it when I'm not so boxed in. <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, I could just with the visualization of it, I could really feel... I could feel um, more of a sense of solidity inside me. Yeah, and so what I will even do is, is I will actually go outside in the yard mm -hmm. and spin, you know, spin counterclockwise. And when I feel a little bit wobbly, I'll get my two feet, you know, and I'll go out barefoot I'll, and anchor them down and see that place where I know where I'm standing. Mm -hmm. We just need to know where we are at all times. And it's just like... And sometimes, you know, I used to have clients and, you know, they would be spinning at their desks and I would just tell them, stand up, jump up and down 10 times. It's kind of the same thing. It's because it's like the earth has your back. You just have to, you just have, you move, you get on, off your wobble. So, um, yeah, so it's just kind of a little exercise to find that place within you. Yeah, it's a great one. It really is a great one. <laughs> And, you know, I keep repeating this over and over and over again, but as you do exercises, when you connect with the elements, remember that they're actually billions of years old. And so these are elements that are holding you. Um, I mean, talk about feeling small. <laughs> they're billions of years old holding you and trying to give you love. Um, so receive it and notice how your life changes. I know I could feel as I, we, were, we were winding back up, I could just feel a sense of peace. Mm -hmm. you no, know, okay, I don't have to carry the world. The world's got me, you know, so that's a pro really good thing. All right, so we're going to continue with this conversation. Um, next time will be water. And then we're going to go into wind and fire. And who knows where else we're going to go, because once we get going, we'll probably be, you know, on this for a little bit. So um, make sure you watch, you make sure you subscribe to shamanstv.com. Go over there, sign up for our email if you want to just be notified of when they are. And uh, 
we've been creating some pretty interesting conversations lately over at the shaman's uh, cave on the Facebook wall. And one thing we would like to ask is that we're not offering healing advice over there. And I see a lot of times people come over there and they want to, they want healing information and they want us to interpret their dreams. I always tell in my groups, if somebody, if you, if I ask you to tell me about my dream, what I would say, if this was, if this was my dream, then I would, you know, we, we really try to keep from giving advice and, you know, giving healing suggestions. And a lot of times we'll just refer them back to your shamanic teacher's website and, and that. So. Yeah, we're getting, um, we're getting some beautiful emails uh, coming on the shaman's cave to let us know how much, um, how much you're getting out of the show, which is, really wonderful to receive that kind of feedback. And like Renee is saying, um, there's a tendency to want to learn about shamanism on Facebook and you just can't type that much. You know, it's, it's a hundred thousand year old tradition. <laughs> you just can't type that much of teachings. And so it's just not the right venue. And so, you know, we refer people to my site. My site is not the only site on the planet that has shamanic practitioners. It's just, I trust them, I train them, they sent me case studies. So if you're looking for help or, or there are questions that are bigger than we can address on the Shaman's Cave, um, check out some experienced practitioners and teachers I train. They'll really be happy to help you. So, She's got some great teachers for sure. <laughs> and I do, I have a class coming up. Um, it's uh, a, a wind work basics class. So if this wind is calling you, come over and join us. Um, it's, it's, I don't know, it's a wind shamanism, I guess, for lack of better explanation. But uh, so, you know, and, and there's some trained people over there. I just haven't been doing it long enough to have a list of, you know, who, who my trained practitioners are. So I always refer them over to Saunders because I trust, I trust the work that you do. And Renee does uh, brilliant teaching, very unique um, <laughs> from anything out there. And so um, be curious and, and go over to the Wind Clan and see what's happening. Well, we'll see you again really soon. And thank you for joining us. And thank you, Sandra, for, for sitting here with me. We have a lot of fun. Yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm.